And this is a practice exercise from page 135 in the textbook. We're writing molecular and net ionic equations. This time we are writing them for displacement reactions. We've previously written them for precipitation reactions and acid-base reactions. This time we are looking at displacement reactions. Something that's different about these displacement reactions is we're always going to start with something in its elemental state. So when it's in its elemental state, that means that it has no charge. Okay, so typically when we write these reactions, we think about what the ions are, how those are going to rearrange to form products. In this case, we are starting with something that's not an ion. However, the cobalt 2 sulfate, that is an ionic compound, that Roman numeral 2 tells me that the cobalt has a 2 positive charge, and we should know that the sulfate has a 2 negative charge. So when we write out this molecular equation, we're going to start with the two reactants they give us. We are going to start with that elemental magnesium, which is just magnesium solid, so notice no charge here. That is going to be reacting with my cobalt sulfate, so based on the charges, that's the formula. Now this is aqueous. So what, are, what am I going to form? In this case, what's going to happen is that magnesium is going to change from its elemental state into its charged state. And when magnesium becomes charged, it has a two positive charge. Since this is a displacement reaction, that magnesium needs to displace something else. So what would the magnesium displace? The cobalt cation or the sulfate anion? Well, it should be obvious that the two positive magnesium is going to replace the two positive cobalt. So that means our product is going to be magnesium sulfate, because the charges cancel, and now this is going to be aqueous, and we are going to be left with elemental cobalt. So that is what this displacement reaction looks like. Elemental magnesium becomes magnesium ion, and the cobalt ion becomes elemental cobalt. Next thing we want to do is we want to write a complete ionic equation. I always like to write the complete ionic before I write the net ionic. And when I write the complete ionic, anything that is a strong electrolyte, I'm going to write as its ions. Now, that elemental magnesium is not a strong electrolyte, it's just a solid, so I don't have to write that any differently. But the cobalt 2 sulfate, that is a strong electrolyte because it's an ionic compound, so I'm going to write that as my cobalt ion, which is aqueous, and my sulfate ion, which is also aqueous. My magnesium sulfate is ionic compound, that's a strong electrolyte, so I'm also going to write that as its ions. But I'm going to leave that elemental cobalt alone because it doesn't have a charge, it's not an electrolyte. So notice throughout all this, I still have balanced reactions. I didn't need any coefficients for this to balance. Last thing I'm gonna worry about is my net ionic equation. In order to make my net ionic, I wanna cancel out any spectator ions. Remember that spectator ions are anything that stays the same on the reactants and product side. Now initially, when you look at the magnesium, you can see that we have magnesium on the reactant side on the product side, but since it has changed from its elemental state to a charged state, this is a change. So this is not a spectator ion, this has changed during the reaction. Same thing happens for the cobalt. It goes from being charged to its elemental state, so that is different. But the sulfate stays exactly the same on the reactant side and product side, so that is a spectator ion, and that will not appear in our net ionic equation. So all we're going to have is the magnesium in its elemental state reacting with that cobalt ion to form magnesium ions and elemental cobalt. So that is my net ionic. The last thing this problem wants me to do is to determine what is oxidized and what is reduced. So I have this phrase that I use, oil rig, O, 
I L R I G, which stands for oxidation is a loss of electrons and reduction is a gain. So let's take a look at my net ionic and try to figure out what is changing. So magnesium went from being an elemental solid to having a charge of two positive. Well, how did it go from having a charge of zero or an oxidation number of zero to having an oxidation number of plus two or a charge of two positive? In order to become positively charged, it must have lost electrons. Specifically, it lost two electrons. If it lost two electrons, that means that magnesium was oxidized. And let's see what happened for the cobalt. Cobalt went from having a two positive charge to being in its elemental state. In order to do that, it must have gained two electrons. The only way to cancel out that positive charge is to gain negative things. So if we went from having a charge of two positive to a charge of zero, it must have gained two negative electrons. And if it gained electrons, that means that the cobalt was reduced. Notice that oxidation and reduction always happen together. If something is being oxidized, something else is being reduced. Oxidation and reduction always occur together. Those electrons are transferring from one element to the other. So the electrons that were lost by the magnesium are gained by the cobalt. We actually have a special word we use for this combination of oxidation and reduction reactions, and that is redox. So when you hear us talking about redox reactions, a redox reaction is a combination of reduction and oxidation. That's where the term redox comes from.